for me. Hello, it's Dr. Richard Downs with uh, Dental Chiropractic Collaborative, and this is uh, online today. I have Celia Kibler, who is a parenting expert and has a popular uh, program called Pumped Up Parenting. Is that right, Celia? That's correct. Pumped yeah. Up Parenting. And I think you do that twice a week. You do that twice a week. I go live in the Pumped Up Parenting group twice a week, Tuesday and Thursdays at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And I also go live in other places with parent, parent help, family help um, on Clubhouse on Saturdays at 9.50 a.m. and in my private groups. Yes. And we first met each other on the uh, program with Chris and Jen on how to become uh, known for, well, just how to get yourself promoted in television outlets. Has that been working for you, Jen or Celia? Uh, it has. I've I've been working. I haven't actually put it out there like into the news outlets yet. Yeah. But I have created some emails that I will be sending out, and well, you know, I'm working well, on that. One of the nicest things is I've made friends with a lot of people who have expertise like yours, in all kinds of different fields, and so just the networking part of that program has been tremendously valuable to me. I learned so much. And I met so many great people. Uh, it was just amazing to me. And I wouldn't mind going through that program again, just to uh, meet more it, people. It, it, it's a lot of work, but it was very much worth it. And it was fun to see what people do to get themselves out there in the community and promote their programs. I agree. Absolutely. So, great connections. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. How'd you get started? What, you, what are you doing and what are you up to? Okay, well, first of all, and primarily, I am a mommy. I'm a mom of five children, two I gave birth to and three I gained through marriage. And I've been successfully parenting a blended marriage for over 25 years. I'm a grandma to nine wonderful babies, children ranging from baby lamb to 16. Oh, no, wrong, 18. So they grow way too fast. And uh, I am also an author of Raising Happy Toddlers, How to That's Build Great right. Parenting Tips and Stop Yelling at Your Kids, because I'm on a mission to stop a million parents from yelling at their kids. And what I plan to do by the end of the year, I plan to complete a million by the end of the year and up it to 10 million. So I basically equip parents with the tools and strategies that they need to overcome those generational cycles of dysfunction and abuse that, you know, so many of us go through. And that's where they learn all their parenting skills, unfortunately, from their past. We teach them new skills, new techniques, new strategies, so that they can create childhoods that everyone can blossom from, instead yeah. of having to always recover. <laughs> so I that's can. what I do. I'm the I founder can. of Pumped Up Parenting yeah. and yeah. Pumped Up Family Fitness. I came from a family where there was some yelling and uh, of course my dad used a belt. <laughs> uh, so uh, I know, I, I think there's better ways to do it. Uh, I learned how to uh, time out with my grandchildren and by golly, it works. It's like, yeah. wow, I didn't know that would work. It works. <laughs> don't have no, to use you anything. You don't need timeouts. You know, I mean, I even tell parents, you need a time. If you think you're running <laughs> out, Give yeah. yourself a time out and think yeah. about it. There you Take go. three minutes. Yeah. Don't just approach it emotionally. Think about how you're going to react so that it's constructive instead of destructive. Yeah. Where can they get your books? Uh, my books are on Amazon. I have Raising Happy Toddlers and I have three children's books. And you can just go directly to celiasbooks.com and okay. you can get all those books on seriousbook.com, oh. which will take you to the Pumped Up Parenting website. Oh, very good. Excellent. So, um, so you know, I primarily am interested on this site. I'm, uh, there's lots, uh, there's uh, uh, many, many chiropractors, many dentists, there's myofunctional therapists, there's hygienists. Uh, it's, it's vastly, that's, that's the vast majority of the membership of this private page. Um, so tell me, I, I, I know you said you've given parents uh, advice about children and sleep in the past. Can you tell me what you do in that area? Happy to. Yeah. Well, as we all know, and you know, being a sleep expert yourself, 
when you don't get good sleep, you get irritable. Irritability leads to all kinds of craziness. And when your children don't get enough sleep, they get irritable. I mean, the same triggers that occur in our adulthood happen to kids and sometimes even worse. And the importance of sleep is not only valuable for your mood, it's valuable for the growing body and for your health and your wellness. You know, not getting good sleep leads to illness. And putting your children on a schedule, on a routine, and putting you on a consistent wake up time and bedtime for most of the days of the week and not going too off kilter on the weekends, really that alone, doing that one step for you and your children will get better sleep. And when you get better sleep, you feel better, you're happier. I totally agree with that. Do you give them advice on the age of the child as far as sleep or? Uh, I do, yeah. I do. And my, I have a chart available for um, sleep for children. The one thing I do do that not, not a lot of people do, um, but there are others that do it, is I give a range of sleep. Because okay. let's face it, some of us are sleepers and some of us aren't. My daughter, she could sleep. She could have taken naps for her whole life because <laughs> she loved naps, but she had to go to school one day. My son, not so much. Some of us do well on less hours of sleep and some of us do well on more hours of sleep. So I offer parents a range for their children so that if you're within this range, your yeah. kids are doing well. I think that's appropriate because we know that individuals are all different, but um, we also know that children need more sleep than adults do. And uh, many of them are not getting enough. As a matter of fact, with the early school starts, nowadays it has been a very difficult problem for parents to get their children adequate sleep do you have a solution for these early school times and have you ever advocated for schools to send children to to start classes a little later i'm just wondering absolutely you know it's until they understand that sending Older kids to school earlier and younger kids to school later is completely opposite of what you should be doing for a child's sleep cycle. Right. They're always going to have kids that are falling asleep in class. That's right. Our older children should not be going to school at seven in the morning. They need to sleep later. Yes. Younger kids, they wake up earlier, send them to school earlier. As a matter and, of fact, Celia, that's true because the circadian rhythm in uh, teenagers switches. And uh, they actually end up wanting, it's just a physiological thing. They want to get to sleep later at night and they want to, and they want to sleep later in the morning. And it's happening and it's exactly the opposite of what schools want them to do. Parents exactly. get frustrated with their kids trying to get them to go to bed early and they can't get to sleep. So right. I know what you're talking about very much. That's very important. I had a friend of mine that was, you know, punishing his child for, well, not punishing, but, you know, just a little bit disgusted with their child for not going to bed and getting up early like they're supposed to. It's very difficult for them, but you're going to have to find a way with this modern society to figure that out. And um, just thought maybe you had a magic formula for that. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, honestly, it's not magic, but no. it may be a, a, a realization for parents yeah. to understand that when the physical body has activity and movement and exercise, you get your body tired. If you're not doing anything, if you're sitting in front of a computer all day, or if your child's sitting in front of their computer or video games all day, they are not moving. It's hard to get physically tired if your right. body is not moving. So one of the best magic tricks is activity get your kids moving a lot let them run outside go run with them chase them around the house play tag do fun stuff and if you get their bodies tired they will yeah. sleep better there's a good that's a good that's very good advice uh very much so yeah I, I love that so in in the area of adhd uh have you given any advice to parents on that particular subject well, concerning sleep? Uh, well, 
just attention, anything. attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. I mean, I'm wondering um, if you've had any practical advice or do you uh, have you run into advice in that area that would be useful for your parents? Well, I do and I advise on it often. I have been working with the challenge community, kids with special needs for 40 some years. And I myself have ADD, not ADHD, but ADD. Yeah, yeah. But um, the, the big thing is, and I will tell you parents, this, this also goes for any child, especially in this time of virtual learning where they're just staring at the screen. They need breaks and they need energy breaks. Yeah. So if, you're, if your child is sitting there and they have a course that they have to be watching, then between time, don't just give them a break to sit on a couch, give them a break to burn energy. Yeah. And if you say you want to go out to dinner and you're like, oh, my child, you know, they're all over the place. They, they can't focus enough to sit and just eat dinner. Spend 15 minutes burning their energy before you right. go. Right. And then spend another 15 minutes when you're done burning their energy so right. that they, they can focus better, they can relax better, and they're not just all over the place with, yeah. you know, with their ADHD. I had a grandchild that was like that. And uh, the school actually gave him a specific time in the morning to go to the gym and just walk around the gym in the building. He was all by himself and, uh, and get a little bit of um, some of this worked out so he could go back to the classroom. And I thought I was really appreciative of what that school did for him. That's you said great. Something about, yeah, you said something about cell phones and screen time. What is, what's your advice around that for children? So everything in, you know, excess, is detrimental. I mean, there's a lot of parents, unfortunately, screens have become babysitters. And, and we all have learned that they're addictive. I, I bet every parent's walking around with a cell phone in their hands. Yeah. And so one thing is what you model with your cell phone needs yeah. to be the kind of usage for screens that you want your children to do. If you always have this in your hands and you're walking around and your kids are trying to talk to you and you're looking and scrolling through Facebook, mm, yeah. they're going to think they're not important to you, that that phone is much more important. Yeah. So they're going to start a lifestyle where their screens are much more important. You have to have boundaries. You have to have schedules where those things are incorporated. I always tell the story of my son who is a gamer he's been a gamer since he was born he had lots of consoles he bought them all but he had limits he was not allowed to be on those video games 24 7. he got a half hour an hour schoolwork, outside time it was all a balance he grew up to get a degree in video gaming he went to work for one of the biggest video game companies he met his wife at that company She's a video game designer. They're like video game heaven, the two of them. <laughs> and they're like an equal match, female and male. But it did not mean that, number one, I lessened that passion of his. I didn't try to act like, oh, you shouldn't be playing video games. He loved it. I entered his world and asked him to teach me what he liked about a video game or how to play. But he always had limits. He was not allowed to just play and a lot of kids today go to bed with their phones go to bed with video games on and if you don't shut those things off an hour before bedtime they're never going to fall asleep that's the truth Celia. as a matter of fact um we have studies showing that the um, the blue light keeps them awake they need to close that down and also there's evidence that the uh, electromagnetic frequency uh non-ionizing radiation is affecting the brain of not only adults, but children. It penetrates and it actually interferes with uh, the stage of sleep called REM sleep. So we are, uh, we actually have an, an EMF expert, uh, Dr. Russell Court, who is doing research on that. And we'll, we'll be presenting more uh, programs to us later 
in uh, in the Sleep Balance uh, in Sleep Balance Academy and also the Dental Chiropractic Collaborative on how to mitigate those particular harmful effects of those radiation devices. And it not, just doesn't just include cell phones. It's your laptop. It's if your router's in the house, it's too close to your bedroom. Uh, you might need to shut that router off at night. As a matter of fact, I think you should shut, shut the router off. Um, if you're sleeping too close to a 220 line in your uh, walls, there are lots of things you need to look for that can uh, uh, mitigate or lo lower that electromagnetic frequency uh, radiation in your environment. So I think- And it's getting worse and worse. Yeah, you know, and, uh, I 10, 5G and 10G is coming out. Yeah. It's gonna be bad. It's gonna be bad. I, I give parents the example of, you know, because I try to be as straightforward and simple as I can when coaching parents. Mm -hmm. And I simply say the cell phones, the screens, all of what's going on, all that energy that's radiated from all these, this technology, mm -hmm. it's like giving your brain a party. So like a party is going off in your brain. You don't want a party, you want rest. And if your brain's having a party and it's not switching into sleep mode, which it actually does, as I'm sure right. you know, then it, it can't rest. Mm -hmm. right. It cannot rest. Yeah, we actually, uh, uh, Dr. Corey has actually uh, worked and uh, developed a uh, supplement for uh, mitigating some of the effects of EMF radiation. And, uh, you know, I've, I've received those and I'm using them now. They, they seem to have some good science behind them, which, you know, I like to, I like to see the science when I'm doing, when I'm recommending anything. Right. Well, look at this is, this is great. A bracelet what you got there? A bracelet to help with the EMFs that has lava and another stone on it. It's okay. not this one. It's this one. Okay. And uh, it's to balance the EMF effects to your body. Oh, okay. Well, I never, not, I not, don't know anything about that, but I know there's lots of devices that they're helping with out there. And one of them could just be an inventory list, which we will provide for our members uh, to look through your house and lower the uh, EMF uh, mitigation, uh, uh, you know, items. I and love then, uh, Different types of things that we can do as far as therapy to uh, overcome some of the damage that might cause. And by the way, some people are more sensitive to it than others, just like anything else. Exactly. So, yeah, didn't mean to get into that particular um, program. Uh, it's, it's important <laughs> and it affects sleep and it affects your child's behavior and well, your it, behavior. The kids are on these cell phones all the time. I'm afraid of uh, the amount of cell phone damage that's going to be happening to their brain with the cell phone. Uh, we know that it penetrates further into children's brain than it does the adult brain. It may be something that you have to do. And then and these um, wireless earphones and things, we might need to go back to something with cords and further away from your body for these I, for these devices. So. Uh, we don't know all the answers yet. Uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of studies out there. Not everything is in co is conclusive, but I believe that the evidence is mounting that there's 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 some problems here. I think so too, and and it's all so new. You know, we don't have the decades and decades and decades right of you know history to figure out how this is going to affect. Well, you, you know, wasn't that to long ago I had old, a bag yeah. phone. Excuse me, go ahead. Oh, yeah. no, I was just going to say, it wasn't that long ago I had that bag phone with a cord. And, oh, you know, I know. I remember that. I just have it somewhere in the house. The bag phone, oh. yeah, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, some of the people like in the military who are dealing with uh, satellite phones and uh, uh, radar jammers, they get tremendous amounts of radiation. And there are um, mitigating... Uh, antioxidant formulas that they're giving to these people in the military that are uh, possible to use for for the average adult. So we'll see how that goes. I, I, I'm gonna leave that up to Dr. Court for his expert. Uh, I, I look forward to hearing from him. Yeah, me too. Well, look at, uh, I wanted to get you on the phone. I wanted to get you online. I wanted to introduce you to the Sleep Balance Academy because the more tools we have to help people get better sleep, including our children, 
Matter of fact, we have a, a, a 10 a step checkoff list to see if your children need a sleep study. There are actually 10, 10 signs that they might need a sleep study. And they include a number of things like uh, prolonged bedwetting, uh, wrestling around in the bed, sweating while you're sleeping, night terrors. There's a number of these, there's 10 of them that could indicate that your child needs a sleep study. And uh, I just think that uh, right now, there's also a need for us to open and widen the airway on children because our lower faces are not being developed. And so someday I'd love to speak to your audience on those particular issues that might help children and your audience become more- I would love it, absolutely. Yeah, just a great collaboration. I've learned something and I really, really look forward to people purchasing your books and, and getting kids uh, more healthy, ready for life. And that includes uh, good airways and sleep. Thank you. Yeah, because you have to remember we're raising adults, not children. So yeah, what you what, do today? What, what, what do you mean by that? Uh, I've heard that before. I, I need you to kind of. Explain it's my it. tagline. Okay. And it's because people always say we're raising children. No, we're raising adults. Your job as a parent is to plant the seeds that they need to become self-sufficient. Um, Sure. Smart, wise, kind, generous, happy adults. Yes. That's our goal. Our okay. goal is to get them to adulthood I, and give them it. the tools they need to be an adult. That's what you're doing as a parent. Yeah, and you have a responsibility. Yelling, yeah. Yeah. You're destroying their self-esteem, their confidence. And they and they look to you for guidelines and boundaries. These children do. They don't want to Absolutely. be. They don't want to be just let run free. That makes them insecure. That's right, and and it yeah. it makes them feel unloved. Yeah. And it really, they they don't learn responsibilities and all of the things that they need to learn to go off in society. It's like people that don't allow their children to be disappointed. Yeah. Or welcome to life when sometimes things don't go our way. Yeah. So if your child is never experiencing disappointment, when they grow up, they will not know how to deal with disappointment and yeah. sadly will turn to drinking or drugs or uh, some other destructive behavior. And if they're not getting sleep, they'll do that too. So exactly. That's right. Exactly. Thank you, Cecilia. Well, look, at this has been really good. I'm glad I got you online with me today. I'm going to post this on the uh, Dental Chiropractic Sleep Apnea Collaborative website um, and also the uh, Facebook site for people to look at and be able to contact you. If they want to contact you, how do they do that? The easiest way, if you want to just talk and talk about what's going on with you, is to go to talkwithcelia.com. Talkwithcelia.com. Talk with and then we can just spend an hour chatting about yeah. you know, what's going on with you and how I can help. Great. And I really appreciate you having me on. And absolutely, I want you to come uh, on to my group and talk about sleep apnea because yeah. I don't think people even consider it in children, sadly enough. And, and it's sad because the, the, the sleep studies for children are, are difficult to get and more expensive than adults. And they have to have all different kinds of well, they're, they're quite different in their uh, parameters. So thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Been you, a have pleasure. A great, you have a great weekend and uh, I look forward to talking to you again sometime, Celia. Yes, soon. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone.